Hello everyone, um, welcome to what I guess is uh, part two of my 1350 original series enterprise build and uh, I went ahead and worked on some more of the photo etch parts. These are the parts for the hangar bay for the different window components in the hangar bay and then I've already laid down on them their first coat of, uh, of enamel which I mixed up 50% uh, uh, thinner and 50% of the enamel. And the enamel itself is a 50-50 mix of two different paints that uh, is recommended by uh, round two and I think Gary Kerr worked out all those paints uh, to match the original model. So that's what's done right here as I've been working on that. And these are some more of the parts for the hangar bay. These I believe get painted white although I do have a little bit of a dilemma um, I think if you're going to be using the lighted uh, the clear parts for lighting like I am I'm not going to be able to install all of these because it will block the lights um, these go up at the ceiling level on there so what I did was I mocked up the opaque parts to see where uh, I'd be placing those and of course these go these pieces right here go up in this section here and here on both sides but on the clear parts which are drying with some adhesion promoter at the moment the LEDs to light this lay down in these troughs right here so I mocked this up with uh, these parts and the um, hangar bay doors to see how much of what you could see and you know uh, when you put the deck in you really can only see these sections here really well so I think I'll be installing those parts here and here and we'll possibly be leaving them off here on the sides. I may uh, lightly frost that you know, with white from up above on the clear parts but I've also been working on the bassards from the light test the other day and the, my big issue has been to get these parts where you can access them uh, in the future and uh, for friction fitting which is what they're supposed to be uh, the parts are really really tight and when I was um, working with the clear dome that goes on here I noticed that it would not go down so I had to sand off areas on here around this lip where the connection points were on the sprue and I've had to sand the inside of this uh, up until, if you can see it, I don't know, up until there's a lip inside. Um, let's see here. There's a lip on this part right in this area right here that that sits up, that the, uh, this piece sits up against when it's installed. So I want to be able to access this if I have to replace the motors in the future and do it rather easily. So I've been sanding this down here. I've also bevel sanded uh, the uh, lip of this part so that's rounded over in the back to make this fit in much easier and easier to remove for this and um, which obviously still needs a little bit of work uh, right here on this side so I'm going to do some more sanding I'm using a barrel uh, attachment grinder to do this work on the inside uh, I've got the front section adjusted now where this actually goes down and fits completely on like it's supposed to and is held in place uh, so this will not get glued in neither will any of these other parts so now that I've got this in place and once it's on the nacelle I mean I can twist this off I may just put a little bit more on there uh, grind down a little bit more to get that to fit because you can twist it on and off before you couldn't even do that you couldn't even get it to fit all the way down like it's supposed to right here so I'm working on that so I recommend if you're gonna light this you need access in there you're definitely gonna have to do some sanding on these parts to get them to fit in and be able to be easily removed uh, once this part is down in place <clears throat> excuse me it is not an easy part to remove so I've been thinking about how I'm going to deal with that um, because one thing you don't want to sand off too much because when the motors in there they do cause vibration and this may shake around so I'm going to sand some more on the edges and hopefully I can 
get that one will be a little bit easier to pop in and out. And of course uh, this part actually will fit into the nacelle part um, right here and there are three rings that go into the nacelle part. So that's, that's where that will end up mounting. And I definitely want to be able to access that to work on the motor and everything in the future. Now I've gone ahead and filed these down, sanded them down. I've got the rings out and um, off the sprues and filed and sanded those down for that. And then I was uh, working on sanding the actual nacelles themselves and I decided, well, seeing how I'm working with the photo etch for the, the hangar bay, I uh, might as well go ahead and prep the photo etch parts that come with the kit, which is on this fret, and I, as you can see I've already cut two of them off. The, those that I've cut off are the grills for the nacelles, which go in on these parts right here. While doing that, um, I found out that my this other piece for the nacelles that hold either the clear parts uh, for lighting or the, the opaque grilled parts, uh, one of them is severely warped. Um, and I tried laying it down into the um, into the nacelle, and it, it just continue wants to spring back up. So I'm not quite for sure what I'm going to do to this. I may try gently heating it with a um, heat gun to see if I can mold it to get it to lie a little flatter. Um, trying to put in the clear parts on this for test fitting. Uh, it's just impossible to get them to set down in there the way they set perfectly on these other ones. So that I'll have to deal with and try to correct. Um, in the process of, of doing the photo etch for these, these beautiful um, but extremely thin grills will go on top of the clear parts um, and then that of course will go into these sections. This one I have already put on the clear part. Now the instructions will tell you to tape them down and form fit the um, the brass around the edges and I don't know if you can see that but that's what I've done on this side and on the opposite side although it's a little bit more obscured with tape I used clamps to hold it in place and tape and then gently rocked it back and forth to get it to bend and form around the edge of the clear part now because this is so thin I didn't, the instructions will tell you you shouldn't have to anneal it, and I did not anneal it, and it bent just perfectly fine, and it's holding its shape uh, around the clear part very nicely. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, form the um, etched parts, all four of them, uh, around these pieces and take them off so that tomorrow, if all goes well, I'll go ahead and paint these when I'm painting up some of the other ones and have those ready because uh, my goal is well seeing how I'm not following the instructions my goal is to complete the nacelles first I want to get the lighting installed I want to get them light blocked uh, the lighting installed in them all the parts on them sanded down and everything uh, nice and smooth for final touch up painting on the outside and get them ready for installation first before I move on to the saucer section next now what I've discovered, and I guess I didn't read the instructions really well, because it'll tell you on 45 to bend the etch around the detail around the ends of the kit part. And it says here form etch parts 45 and 46 over the respective kit parts. Uh, being 0 0.005 of an inch, they will not require annealing, but should be taped in place to hold them steady. Well, that's really interesting because the smaller of the grills, which is kit part, I believe, 45, which is this clear part in the lighting kit, when you place this on here, there is um, extra, a tiny bit of extra on both sides to wrap around. But on kit part 46 with the brass 
at least with the one I have, there is no extra and the brass fits directly on top of the clear part and there's nothing left to wrap around on here even though the instructions seem to indicate that you're supposed to do that I don't have any extra to wrap so I went ahead and filed this part down after cutting it from the fret and uh, I'll just set it aside and prepare it, uh, clean it and prepare it for um, painting tomorrow um, because there's not much to do there so It'd be interesting to know if uh, the instructions are wrong or there's something slightly off here on the on the photo etch. Um, but I, if this can wrap around, I don't know how it can because there's definitely not enough extra there to wrap around on the larger of the two grills. But there is on the smaller of the two, which uh, I will do just like I did this other one and wrapping it slightly around there like this um, and get it ready. Now if the end's taped up, I'm going to go ahead and, and gently form that brass around the edge. And when you're working with uh, doing stuff like this, it's good to have a nice smooth ceramic tile or some type of a piece of glass or whatever to work on these parts with. And for Jason out there, Jaymore on SciFiModelAction.com, he's not the only one with cats that get in the way and cause issues. I have one myself that, as you can see, every time I turn on the camera and I'm doing something delicate, she's off in the background complaining. Good, that's how that came out wrapped around nicely and so is this side you can see it reflecting there in the camera that wrapped around nicely and so is that side right there so that parts those two parts are done and we'll move on to the next item well what I thought I'd do before ending this video is to do a little mock-up now what I have here is the light tape that actually comes in the kit and I've inserted the clear grill parts that have their own little ridges molded onto them in the clear styrene and this one I've had to tape down in the middle because the part bows up slightly um, then this is the smaller one at the back now the nacelle is not light blocked on the inside so you can see the results of that I haven't got to light blocking it yet but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move real close so you can see that grid pattern on the clear plastic now I haven't cut the strip, it's the full strip, so there's a lot more light in there than what we would normally have. Um, I think the lighting instructions indicate to put three, uh, three LED sections um, inside the nacelle. But what I wanted to show you is what this will look like with the grill parts, from the photo etch parts, laid on top and you can really see the detail differences when we get down here and let me just lightly position this one right there and you get the nice grill compared to just the raised bumps on the um, clear plastic part so that's really cool and let me see if I can put this one on this is the one that's been formed around the edge so you can see what that'll look like um, slightly off on it. Yeah, that's a little bit better, but you can see, let me um, block the light from that opening right there and get the camera in really close so you can see what that looks like. The photo etch provides a lot more detail and is really cool looking. Um, so I think this is definitely a good upgrade for the kit in terms of the nacelles. Now, I've heard some discussion on the sci-fi model action forum from some people who have made some comments in other places about what color the inside of the nacelle should be and 
you know, on, on the studio model, it was not lit. But apparently, I, I think according to Gary Kerr, there was evidence that Roddenberry wanted to light the nacelles, the grills, but due to budgetary concerns, it wasn't done, just the basards at the front. So, who knows what that color would have been. And I'm debating whether or not to use these um, warm white LEDs or go with blue or violet. Um, and I don't know, I've got some blue uh, strips and I think I may have some violet ones I may try and show later. Um, I've got to figure out what color I want that to be and see how, whatever that color is, how good that looks with the basard at the front. So, there you go. Just a quick detail and just wanted to show everyone what that looks like and the reason why you may want to consider getting the photo etch set um, from round two with the nacelles besides the additional photo etch set from Paragraphics. Thank you all for watching and I hope everyone has a happy new year and had a Merry Christmas and good holidays to everyone and happy modeling.